and welcome to another episode of Coin Talk with the Hollenbecks. I'm Hannah. And I'm Tom Hollenbeck. And we're right here in our store in Colorado Springs, Colorado, coin capital of the world. Yeah, we're just about two blocks from the A&A, so if you happen to be in Colorado visiting the National uh, Coin Museum, stop by and uh, say hi to us. We'd love to see you. National show in Denver a couple weeks, May 6th, 7th, 8th. Hope to see you there. Swing by our ta table and say hi. All right, and if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you liked this or something new. And today's video is actually from feedback below. So thanks for writing comments. Today, we are talking about varieties in coins. First question, what's the difference between a variety and error? Well, an error, that's what we get this all the time. I've got an error or I've got a variety. I've got a, a die state. What is the difference between these things? First off, the, the error is the most obvious. An error is like a coin like this, a penny that's been uh, uh, broad struck or misstruck or uh, struck on the wrong planchet or there's an error in the striking process or something fell on the die, damage almost, that was done at the mint. That is a, pretty much a definition of an error. These are going to be unique things because it was some kind of fluke that happened. And a lot of the time the mint wants to kind of melt them back away so a lot don't get released. Something like a blink where there's nothing on the front or the reverse of a coin are pretty common actually. Yeah, there's a lot of them that are uh, very minor. If it's a little, if a little piece of dust fell on the coin was struck and it has a little bitty strike through, really doesn't make much difference. If a, a string falls down or a wire or a spring or something like that that's metal and gets struck into the coin, then it's pretty cool. So it's got to be a pretty dramatic error. You know, there's a penny that's got totally uh, wiped out because it was smashed and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. So, or this one is called a saddle strike where there's two coins that the, the blanks were struck and it, it actually looks like a saddle. So we want to be careful though between what happened during the minting process and once the coin was released into circulation, just regular damage to a coin. Yeah, when you're getting into uh, what we consider varieties. Now what is a variety? Uh, according to ngccoin.com, they have the U.S. has, uh, that they recognize in U.S. coins 6,242 varieties. So there's a bunch of varieties. And some varieties are very dramatic and very popular. Other are very minuscule and have uh, limited interest uh, nationwide. Some of the common ones are when they change the design. You might have heard about the American Silver and Gold Eagles changing design this summer, 2021. So there's a type one Silver Eagle and a type two, and that is technically a variety. Yep, yeah, exactly. So there's could be uh, some things that just a, a alteration of the die in there. So the, some of the more fun varieties are things like this, like a three-legged buffalo. Most people have heard of a three-legged buffalo. Uh, when they strike the coin, basically when they make the die they press it with the hub and they make the die and then they re-hub it in the second time and then uh, they polish it off a little bit and they, they use it for striking the coin. Uh, after a couple hundred thousand coins when it starts to get a little bit of metal fatigue they will re-polish the die and then use it again and inspect it and then re-polish it again uh, and they use the die for you know how many strikes the coin can have. Usually it's somewhere 600,000 to a million coins, uh, strikes. Check this three-legged buffalo out on our website, linked below, and take a look at the reverse to see why he has three legs. So what happened during the minting process that cut off his leg? Well, uh, one of the times where they're assuming that probably the second time they repolished the die and they were getting it back into uh, uh, use, uh, they some got a little aggressive at the mint and they were going with an emery cloth or a board or a, a file and they filed it a little bit too much and the the lowest point of the coin, the buffalo's front leg, was not really very raised to start with even on a really nice one and it just disappeared because they over polished the die itself. So the, when it comes to a variety, every coin off that die is going to have exactly the same uh, it'll look the same. Everyone will be missing the, the third leg. 
And that's why it's a layer. variety, not an error, because this is how they were made. In comparison, though, this is pretty rare, correct? Yeah, I mean, they're very collectible and quite scarce. I hate to use the term rare. That's a little overused. Because, I mean, it's still a $500 coin and very fine. So, yes, it's a good coin as compared to a regular 3070 and the same grade would be worth... 75 cents, you know, so yes, it is worth substantially more because of that variety in there. And you'll note that this is certified saying three legs there. If you haven't watched it already, click below to watch our certification video. But this is something where we sent it to certify to make sure that someone hadn't scratched out the buffalo's leg, that it was truly the dye variety as compared to manipulation or uh, damage. Yeah, we commonly in the, uh, see in the coin store there someone took a regular 3070, like the sign I said that's worth a, a dollar, and they just removed the leg. So uh, by removing the leg, you did not make a three legged buffalo nickel, you just damaged the regular one. There's several diagnostics of what a real one looks like, including the back of the Indian's neck it is modeled looking. Uh, there's also uh, there's some there's a few distinct characteristics. Uh, the back of the buffalo, where it says E Pluribus Unum, uh, on a normal one is touching, it's kind of separate a little bit because they were polished the dye a little bit. So there's few diagnostics like that on what makes it a true three-legged buffalo. Speaking of diagnostics, when people come in and they think they have these errors and varieties, we like to guide you to the Cherry Pickers Guide. Now this book has all, there's two editions, this one right here is half dimes to modern ones. We have the other version. And so it needs to be in this book. This book will show you an in-depth picture, close zoom-ins of what the variety types are. Yeah, the Cherry Pickers got these written by, written by Bill Fieva and J.T. Stanton. Uh, and it's a, it's a great book. It's really a, a good reference book. Uh, online, I do like the NGC website, ngccoin.com, and then go into... Oh gosh, I'm not even sure which part it is, but you can look into what they call Variety Plus. And like I was saying, there's 6,242 varieties uh, that the U.S. For the cents alone, there's 1,587 varieties that they will, uh, they will certify if you ask. One of the more popular ones uh, is a 22 no D cent. With these coins, do you have to pay more for a variety when certifying? Well, yes and no. Certain ones like three-legged buffalo, no. Because everybody looks for a three-legged buffalo and you would not send it in to pay the $35 grading fee if it was only worth a dollar. So there, your assumption is you write three-legged buffalo on there and they're going to put three legs on there. The 22 uh, no D, there's uh, several varieties of this. There's a strong reverse and a weak reverse. So uh, yeah, you did have to pay a little extra to get this graded. And if you're looking for... Uh, VAM varieties, which the VAM is on the Morgan dollars. Yes, that costs, I think it's 15 or $18 extra per coin if you want that put on. Uh, if they're looking, they look for a specific uh, variety. With the NGC coins as well, on the website, it gives you a really great picture. You can blow it up, you can use your cursor to zoom in and really see what's the difference between a regular and a variety coin. So when you're looking through yours and you've been looking at them for hours and hours and hours and everything starts to look the same, you can see if it really is a variety or not. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's, we see a lot of double dice. Uh, I don't have one in front of me now, but uh, we see the 55 double die, 72 double die. Those are probably the most popular ones out there. There's also 83 and 84 cents that are uh, double dies. And the doubling, like I said, they hub it. They when they re put the when they smashed it into the die, then they took it out and smashed it again. They were a little bit cattywampus or a little bit offset. And uh, then every coin that comes out of that uh, when that coin is struck has the exact same characteristics. So for those. Uh, the, the nice thing about the Cherry Pickers Guide, it talks about uh, shelf doubling, uh, which is kind of a, it's not a true double die. So you need to find out, if you can look at those books and then look at a true double die, uh, it'll tell you, it's great to have a, a reference on how to do that. And if you're looking at errors and varieties for really a more money in it, some are not always going to be more valuable. So an example was a 2015 Homestead Quarter, Snow on the Roof, uh, and that they made a few of them. We found some on eBay, a customer drove, you know, half an hour, an hour to see us, and they were selling for $1.50 on eBay. So sometimes it's not really more valuable to have one of these cool, but not always going to make you a millionaire. Yeah, and there's uh, there's a lot of, uh, 
very, very small varieties. I always say if you have to use a magnifying glass for it, that immediately loses some of the uh, appeal. If you have to, if you're looking and looking and looking and seeing, I think I and Liberty is looks to be slightly doubled. You know, if you're having to really look at it that close, it probably isn't going to be worth much. Anyways, I hope that video taught you something. If you have further questions, leave a comment below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. See you. Bye. Bye.